Hello, everybody. Welcome to AUHSD Future Talks. I'm your host, Michael Matsuda, superintendent of the Anaheim Union High School District. And as the name implies, this is all about the future, the future of post COVID-19. What is that going to look like for our kids, our families, our communities, and really this country? There's a lot at stake as we go forward. We're very lucky at Anaheim Union High School District to have many, many partners, including uh, partners in higher education and uh, in business and nonprofit, because we are really focused on trying to prepare our 30,000 students for the world of work and going beyond college into careers and life. And we're really lucky to have uh, so many great speakers, including today's speaker, uh, Henry Hua, the Dean of the Business and Commuter, uh, Computer Information Systems at Cypress College. Henry, welcome to our show. Thank you, Superintendent Matsuda. I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I've really appreciated our own personal relationship as, um, as colleagues. And, you know, um, it's, it's hard to move entire systems, whether it's AUHSD or Cypress College to, especially when you're kind of forward thinking and you're moving people's cheese and you're putting a lot of attention on the system and, and, and getting people to understand what we're trying to do. Um, before we go to that big question, though, I think it's important that our audience knows a little bit more about you, Henry. I know you've been with the uh, Cypress College for 20 years, been a dean for four years. And let's just hear a little bit about your story, Henry. Absolutely. So I, I think I resonate the story of many of your students at Anaheim. You know, my parents were um, immigrants. Uh, coming into the United States and I'm the first generation I was born here uh, and, and, you know, living in, in economically disadvantaged areas, right? So I grew up in Long Beach, uh, right next to Compton. And, uh, you know, you learn uh, different things as you grow up and you kind of think about different areas that you want to go to. I grew up in a very traditional Asian household, right? And they, you know, always strive to try to uh, going to medicine or going to something of that nature. And I was always that kind of black sheep that said, you know, I kind of like to do things differently. I want to try to do different things. And the journey has brought me here. Uh, you know, I tell my parents all the time, I says, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be a doctor and help all these people. But I think every day that partnerships like ours, you know, were able to change not only you know the way that people are or people are doing, but we're able to change a generation. And that's one of the things that I've always held on to. And every time I talk to a next group of students is, what are we gonna do today that's gonna change a generation? And so uh, as my parents kind of grown into the idea of me staying in education and making this kind of a lifelong commitment, they've been very supportive of that. Uh, and, and I've been very grateful for my upbringing uh, to be in education for so long. Uh, I, I started off as a classified employee, um, you know, somebody, I was a programmer uh, for our district. Uh, I've gone in every facet of our district in terms of teaching, uh, classified employee, and then, then finally now in administration. So I've, I've kind of gone through the ranks, uh, but growing up in Long Beach and growing up in that type of environment has also made me very humble in, in, in understanding the, the value of what education can bring to our next generation of students. Thank you, Henry. So I'm really impressed with your leadership and obviously with uh, with Dr. Joanna uh, Schilling, the, the president of Cypress College. She's brought, she and you have been really instrumental in our AUHSD's partnership with a, a large forward-thinking community college district in terms of tr transforming education. In your, in your words, what does that mean to transform education? What is, what is the, if you were to explain in an elevator, what is AUHSD and Cypress College doing that's so different than other institutions? How would you explain that in just, you know, in an elevator? I think for me, it's about uh, how we view our students. They're not just students to us. Uh, I don't know. A lot of times we spend a lot of time just trying to get numbers and our students turn into a number because there's so many of them. But we have really spent time uh, at our campus to build relationships and to build a, a family type of environment. Uh, you know, we know students by name. 
right? We spend a lot of time knowing who they are as people, and then they become students at Cypress College. And, and that's why we kind of took on that endeavor with you and the partnership uh, with AUHSD to, to uh, enhance what we do in dual enrollment, to have them see that there's a truly what a seamless transition means. And how could you, define, could you define dual enrollment for our audience? Because that's absolutely. another vocabulary word that people need to understand. Absolutely. Dual enrollment is a program that allows uh, all of our students at AUHSD and our local high school feeders to participate in college classes absolutely free of charge. And that is literally our taxpaying dollars. All getting high school credit. Correct. So that's where the dual component comes in. Thank you, Mike, for, for saying that. So students are able to not only get high school credit for the college classes they take, they also get college credit for the high school, for the college classes they take. And so they're able to literally get two areas covered by taking one course. And that time savings, the money savings is huge and, and making sure that it pays dividends for the tax dollars that you've spent to the community college system and also your K through 12 system. And in our district, uh, most of the dual enrollment classes are weighted just like an AP course. And most of them, not all of them, but most of them are fully transferable. Right. Just yeah. Like so how would you how would you differentiate dual enrollment from AP courses? Because that's kind of the traditional norm with uh, with high school offerings. Yeah, I, I think the, the, the primary difference is uh, the AP course is taught uh, through the high school in preparation for an exam. The a college course that you're taking is absolutely the traditional college course, just as if you were to come in as a freshman or whatever tier you would come in as and you're taking a class uh, through the semester and there isn't a test that you have to take other than the course requirements of maybe midterms, finals, the traditional college course. Uh, that's number one. Number two is uh, the course is fully transferable to all of our uh, public and private institutions uh, as long as you get a C or better. So in this case, a student that may be taking an AP course needs to get a certain score Ours is a grade, it's weighted, uh, it gives a student, the, the, and I think another biggest difference is that it gives a student the college experience. An AP course is taught primarily with high school students in the high school environment. This is a college course that is taught with um, everyone within the college, within the community from you know, 18 to 55, 70, I mean, as old as they wanna be. And it gives them that kind of environment of what a workforce can look like. And I think that really does give value. Well, you mentioned the word workforce because the AP courses, and we still offer a um, full range of AP courses. We're not, we're not shrinking that, but I, I'm really attracted to this dual credit with community colleges because it moves away from the traditional uh, types of courses to the workforce aligned courses and um, where you could really um, access, students can access these workforce skills virtually while they're in high school, which is huge. So let's, let's talk specifically about how we built the uh, cybersecurity pathway and why is that such a revolutionary thing? So we built in partnership with AUHSD, I think a, a national model of not just offering courses to a student, but offering a path and offering a, uh, a career. And cybersecurity happens to be that, that first path that we developed with AUHSD that has uh, gotten national recognition because it allows a student to go from high school student to career in a very short period of time. And it's a career that not only uh, is cutting edge, it's above and beyond um, just living wages, right? So the average a salary of a cybersecurity professional is 65,000 and above. And so, so we have, yes. So that, um, and you know, and because of that model, I know that we were invited by IBM to present the model in New York City. It was an international uh, conference. So when you say that our model is truly uh, national uh, cutting edge, it is. And I think that's proof of it. So the other proof, as you uh, mentioned, as you alluded to, is the starting salary of some of these cutting edge areas. So um, can you share with the audience uh, about some of the stories with uh, some of our kids who just have a high school diploma and a couple of these 
dual credit courses through uh, Cyprus in cybersecurity. Yeah, absolutely. Just um, to show the significance and, and the need and demand of this type of area, we started this program in uh, 2018, where we started at Magnolia High School, which is our Magnolia Center of Innovation. And, and we had students that took that class as, as a senior and took literally two classes with us and had an opportunity after those two classes to get additional internship work at Hulu. And that work has been um, literally life-changing and generationally changing because these students had the exposure that they were not uh, aware of before they took the dual enrollment course. So during the duration of the Hulu internship, these students were able to be offered full-time jobs at Hulu as security analysts through additional training through Hulu and other institutions, but was able to get that starting uh, with Cypress College and the Magnolia opportunity uh, to be a full-time security analyst at $65,000 a year. And so those type of examples are ones that we feel are exemplary to the work that we're trying to do because now they were originally thinking about graduating from high school and then going into work maybe with our parents in construction or in other areas, but now have a not only a job, but have a career. Yeah, and those students were pretty much first generation, low income, right? And um, and, and they did, uh, I know Anthony had shared, Anthony Gomez had shared his story with his own family. Could you uh, share with the audience uh, what some of the resistance has been? Because a lot of the traditional parents, even mainstream parents, don't really understand this new model of, of cybersecurity and other cutting edge areas. So. Uh, can you share again um, how his family has come around to support his pathway? Yeah, absolutely. I remember when Anthony told me, he says, you know, I, I went to my mom, I'm graduating from high school, and I, I went to my mom and dad and asked them, you know, I really want to continue on on this path because I enjoy it so much. And, you know, the first thing they thought about was you're just playing video games or you're just, you know, kind of messing around on the computer. And, and he says, no, you know, really what I'm trying to do is be a, a cybersecurity professional. And his dad told him, he says, you know what? We need you to bring money in now. We, we really can't wait for you to uh, play around and mess around with the computer and then finally come back to me years later about getting a job. And so you know, it took some convincing. We had to have some conversations, some heart-to-heart uh, -heart conversations about what was important, right? What was uh, the trajectory of this type of work? And so they finally were able to kind of give in a little bit and says, okay, seeing that you have an opportunity at Hulu and uh, seeing that you are really have some passion in this work, we're going to let you try it. Well, what tried turned into tears of joy because what happened was six months later, you know, they were being, he was being offered a job at Hulu. And Anthony told me so proudly, this is, this is the first time in my life where I was able to now bring home groceries with my mom with a paycheck I brought home. So that and tells you. What was his starting salary with a high school diploma? $65,000. $65,000. Yeah. yeah, huge. Yes. And he has the option through the pledge to continue to uh, his education and perhaps end up at UCI with computer science and return to Hulu, I'm sure at six figures. Yeah. So he yeah. just got a raise. So he just told us he, you know, he 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 went through his year of probation. Now he's at seventy two thousand dollars with uh, with that raise. That that's that's amazing. And that story is really important to get out there to our community so they understand um, how revolutionary this new model is. Because I think that the partnership with community college, all of a sudden, you can really multiply by everything the community college offers, right? And eventually a lot of that could be offered at the high school level to expand our curricular offerings and our pathways. So speaking of cutting edge pathways, we are again partnering with Cypress College to uh, expand into artificial intelligence yep. at Kennedy High School. Can you share with the audience why artificial, what is it in your opinion, and why is that so important and cutting edge at um, Kennedy High School? Yeah, so, so artificial intelligence essentially is the opportunity to um, maximize the learning of machines and uh, computers, uh, building in to the systems what a human 
uh, would need to make decisions. So it's a decision-making model that's much more advanced. Uh, you know, you see nowadays, you see self-driving cars, self-driving rovers, uh, you know, smart devices. All of those have computer chips that have algorithms that make decisions. Well, uh, we've partnered, uh, as uh, Superintendent Matsuda indicated, with Kennedy High School to develop a program that allows students at the high school level to begin learning what that science looks like. How do you develop uh, the decision-making tree, the model tree within the ideas of computer science? So this is cutting edge because there isn't a program like it across the nation nor the state. Um, this is something that's taught at a higher level, but because of the partnerships that we've developed with, in tandem with our work with AUHSD, we brought on our higher ed partners, both Cal State Fullerton and UCI, both in computer science and computer engineering, to help our students build a foundation uh, much stronger than just a traditional computer science curriculum. And I think that is huge because it allows our students to see what's coming in the future. This is only gonna progress. It's not gonna come, you know, go backwards. Yeah, I think that we're really excited, Henry, to be partnering with Cypress College on uh, another cutting edge pathway. So, you know, I know that your your whole background is uh, business and computer science. I mean, it is in the STEM world, but you and I have had a lot of conversations about the soft skills. We call yes. it the five C's. What is Cypress College doing to really affirm um, the, the, the soft skills? And why do you think that that is also important? Yeah, we really feel that the soft skills are critical, even more so than the technical skills, because the soft skills come from internal. The soft, the, the technical skills can always be learned. And so if we can help with the work that AUHC is already doing in the five C's, we want to be able to do that. And so what we've done now is not only are we looking at the five C's being taught curricularly, we want to be able to showcase what the five C's mean to them as a person. And so we've developed what are called personnel scorecards that allows potential employers to see real time what the students a level of those five C's are. What is it their level in terms of collaboration? What is it that they've done and not only says that they've learned uh, in that area. So we have collaboration, critical thinking, uh, all your five C's embedded into projects and then embedded into tangible, feelable things that the student has done to showcase those skills firsthand. You know, what I love working about with you, Henry, I think you're, you're kind of, you're, you and I are kind of uh, educational entrepreneurs, always trying to think, uh, entrepreneurially trying to transform our systems and moving from just these siloed K-12 community college, you know, four-year institutions to this create this sort of cohesion. And I'm really impressed, Henry, with your uh, just your, your, your own uh, vision as well, because not only are you working with AUHSD, but you're working with our feeder elementary districts, right? Uh, can you, in the few minutes that we have, left share with the audience some of the work that you're doing with the with the feeders as well to get yeah excited. yeah absolutely i mean that is exciting as you can see I, I get really excited about talking about this type of work because it's really once again changing a generation right it's having them understand the value of education so as mike has alluded to we started working with our k through six partners in developing that pathway to um, any of our programs at AUHSD and other districts uh, through our Superintendent's Cup. And so that's one of some of the work that we've been working with. Uh, we have Centralia School District, Savannah School District, uh, Magnolia School District, and uh, Cypress School District. And we're all absolutely looking forward to developing our work with Anaheim School District because letting them know that we're here waiting for them and literally chomping at the bits at their educational journey and being part of it for the next six years and then and beyond is huge because a lot of times students don't see how attainable college education is and for us to be at the forefront of that education so early on makes them feel comfortable and also makes them understand why we're there and how we support them so the superintendent's cup is a contest right so what it is, is yeah, so the Superintendent Cup is a regional contest of our four feeder districts in collaboration with AUHSD in learning about cybersecurity and cyber literacy and cyber hygiene extremely early, right? We're talking about technology and how it works 
um, and, and what it means for them to be in a cyber atmosphere environment and, and how do we attain a cyber hygiene without being attacked. And so AUHSD has been instrumental in developing that pathway so that they're learning at phases and understand the foundations of, of, of cybersecurity uh, throughout every junction of their life. I think that's awesome. And the minute or so that we have left, Henry, what what uh, advice do you give directly to our 30,000 students who attend AUHSD? I think the biggest message is take advantage of the opportunities that are being built uh, from the folks that are here today. They really want to make sure that you have the necessary tools and opportunities and uh, folks that are available to you to uh, make your journey as ambitious as possible. Don't be confined by what you've seen in tradition. Think outside the box and 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 allow yourself the the unlimited potential, the unlimited you that you've gotten at AUHSD. Wow! Thank you so much uh, for this opportunity to really get to know you and um, understand the relationships uh, between institutions. Always begin with people. And Henry, we're very uh, in debt and we have uh, much gratitude to you personally, as well as uh, Cypress College for helping us build this new educational model. Thank you so much, Henry. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.